Here we go. Yep. Hi, it's Nirja, and today I'm having a spiritual chat with Navjeet Kandola. Today we're talking about overcoming traumatic experiences and emerging stronger, wiser, and more committed than ever to leading a full, rich, joyous life. Navjeet, I'm going to read you a short bio from her because she's quite fascinating and I don't want to get any details wrong. Navjeet is a spiritual advisor, teacher, blogger, and a mama. She's the director of the Nizoni School for Global Consciousness and a full-time mom. She holds a master's degree in inspirational media, a bachelor's in divinity, a British law degree <laughs> and a B Tech diploma in business and public administration. Well, she likes school. <laughs> she has counseled and learned from people from all walks of life, millionaires, CEOs, homemakers, artists, and even heroin addicts. You can learn from everybody, I'm sure. She works she's worked with incredible children and teens in public schools and detention centers. She has hosted and produced two concurrent radio shows, Window to the Sky and The Media Brunch. She directed the independent program, Knowings. Is it Knowings with a plural? Knowings. Knowings, yeah. And The Chris Grisham Show and a show called Life in Motion. She writes regularly in her spirited style, which I love, on her blog site, tenderlogic.com. And we're going to put all that site details for you on this video. And this site, which I love, is dedicated to inspiring and creating insight for fellow stargazers and trailblazers. Welcome, Navjeet. Thank you. Thank you You're for welcome. being here. Thank you for the lovely introduction. You have a story which I want to share with everybody that is so inspiring because just like the title says, overcoming traumatic experience and in your case, which we're going to hear about, involving severe injury, but not only overcoming it, but emerging. And that's where the lessons that I want to uh, impart in some way to everybody is in that emerging, stronger, wiser, and like we said before, more committed than ever to living a full life. So without further delay, I would love to have you share with us, tell us your story that I referred to. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you, Nirja. I just want to say before I tell that story how happy I am that you want to focus on the emergence mm. from something traumatic and, and tragic sometimes. But that part of us that is, is, is the butterfly after the cocooning or the end of the caterpillar phase. Um, so, my story is that in May, uh, May 2010, mm -hmm. my family and I were on holiday in the Bahamas. And it was evening time, my husband was swimming in the ocean, my mother-in-law was along for the holiday, she was swimming snorkeling as well. And my son and I, who was about to turn two then, a week away from being two, were just standing on the beach just watching the wonderful sunset, there was a, almost a full moon behind us. Mm. And I heard something or felt something and I turned around and what I saw was an explosion, a small plane exploding and it flying over us, my son and I, and crashing into the water where my husband and mother-in-law were swimming. Now, that, that explosion happened about the same height because it hit the electrical wires. So you can understand, so it wasn't very high up, it wasn't like way up in the sky, it was ah. very close to it. And then from the explosion, as it exploded, it passed literally like this, over us. So burning both myself and my son. And uh, I had my son in my arms at the time, and uh, first thought, so I, I thought, I, because it was such a loud sound, it sounded like the sky cracked open. It was like, it, it felt like it was the end of the world. Literally, that's what the instant thought was, it's the end of the world. I don't know what's going on. It's crashed where my husband's swimming. And in those first few seconds, it felt like it was the end of the world. And my husband was dead. My mother-in-law was dead. Oh my God. And what was I 
you, mm. you know, where I'm from this art. And, um, but then when I felt into myself again, I thought that if my husband died, that I would feel him go, that I would feel something from me, within me. But that happened. And then I, my attention, I mean, this is happening in like nano, nano. Yeah, I was just going like, to say, oh. you remembered so clearly. This is, and it, it, it was happening so fast. And then at the same time, I'm looking at my, my myself, and my body is burned, and, and more than anything, all I can hear is my son screaming. But if I was completely, he was gone. He was gone. He was, he, he was in so much agony. Oh my God. And, and so, I could feel the agony myself, and I remember giving myself a moment to scream because I didn't want to freak him out even more. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, to be stable and to be his mum. So I remember maybe screaming two or three times because you can't hold it back. It's so much pain. Wow. And, and, and then, you know, suddenly tons of people are there and for some strange reason, nobody could see me and I was saying to them, help us, help us, we're hurt, we're hurt, somebody help us. And they're all busy looking at where the plane has crashed and there's flames and the wing and everything and nobody's seeing that we are actually hurt until finally I, I stopped in, some, in front of this guy's face and I said, please help us, we're burned, we're burned. And then he started, he raised the alarm, help, help, you know, we've got people who are injured on the beach, come, come, come. And then it was, um, and then it was another long journey, six hours to get to the hospital. Six hours. Six how? How in the car ambulance? We had to go by car to the clinic on the island first, but they didn't have running water because oh, it was a holiday. Everything was closed, mm. and so it took half an hour before we could even wash all that stuff off us so we were con so what may some of some of the burns may have been like second degree and you know second degree it burns that blister so that's a second degree a third degree is when it goes into the deeper tissue so that your skin becomes like cooked chicken oh. and third degree is when you have holes it's just all melted away so what some what may have been like first and second degree burns initially became third and fourth degree burns because there were it we just didn't have the opportunity to wash it off. There was nothing. We couldn't go into the ocean water because that stung like hell. And for me to take my son into that, plus all the debris from the plane crash. <laughs> so what did you do? I mean, how you got your child is crying of pain. I was he was nursing, or I was walking up and down. And imagine I'm just wearing a burnt out bikini at this point. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, people are staring. They're staring at this woman with a child, and his side of his face is burnt, his hair has been burnt off, and, you know, my shoulder, the back of my shoulder's melted, and my, the skin's just falling off my arm and my legs, and, um, and some, some of my back. Oh my and gosh. Uh, so, all I was doing was trying to keep my son alive. That's all I could think of. And I'm just um, singing nursery rhymes to him nursing him and then once in a while I would hand him over to my husband and then go to another room and scream <gasps> and then hold him and walk up and down and my feet were burnt. There was it, there was no skin on my feet. I mean it was just gross and painful. And um, and so then finally the doctor came half an hour later, they put cream cream on me to, to soothe it, to stop it going um, getting infected, gave me some uh, I think morphine probably to help with the pain and but they couldn't do that for my son because he was young he was only a baby so they only gave him something the equivalent of ibuprofen or something oh my and IV and it was um, a journey but by a car and then a boat and then a plane a medevac plane and then another ambulance 45 minute another 45 minute ambulance ride and then hours of waiting because they don't have an active birds unit in Nassau so I was waiting for somebody to actually come to to deal with us. Yeah. Wow. So now, okay. So finally, you're in the hospital. That's the story. Yeah. And you're pain. You you have medication. Right? right. So then, what? I mean, then the, the the healing must have been incredibly painful because it burns, right? So now yeah. you and your son. So how are you dealing with your pain and your child's pain at the same time? My goodness.
I think that the foremost in my mind was my son. Mm. Because they couldn't, they were waiting and luckily he kept nursing that whole time. So imagine I'm being bandaged, I've got three IVs in me and I'm nursing him because when you get burned you lose fluid and you can die from that. And so he doesn't have an IV in him. And they are dilly-dallying and da 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 and by the time they get to getting an IV in him, all his veins are flat because he's completely dehydrated and they can't find a vein to get the IV in him. And so, you know, it just, it was just, it was, that was, that was a, the most prominent conversation with me was to how to make sure that he is out of pain. I wanted him to be out of pain. And I think it was finally when they had bandaged him up, I asked them to bandage him first, and then they bandaged me. And then they took him away to the NICU, with, and my husband went with him, and then I went to the to the ward where I was going. That was when I let myself know that I had been in a terrible accident. Mm. I was just trying to deal with things, handle things. And then it was it wasn't even really clear what it meant because they were talking in terms of years of recovery, thinking in terms of a week. <laughs> and I said, you know, I don't know why I was thinking that. I thought maybe a week to ten days and then the skin will grow back and I'll be fine because I didn't have any relationship to serious burns injuries before this. Mm, so you didn't know how bad it was. You did not know how bad... No, so I did not feel... And they were telling me and I didn't really believe them. And now I didn't believe I didn't believe them when they were saying skin grafts. I didn't believe oh. them when they were saying surgeries. I didn't believe them. So now I can imagine. I mean, anybody's listening to this burns, skin grafts, surgeries. How long were you in pain, and how did you manage that pain? Because that's not a sh like you said. It's not a week in the hospital. I'm sure. No, that was painful. Let me think, like almost two and a half years, oh. two years plus, yeah, yeah. And so now, I know for me, if I'm in pain of any kind, like there's really nothing positive going on in my head. <laughs> you know, I'm focused on the pain, oh poor me, it's, it hurts, I want to cry. How but do you use becomes boring. Even pain ah. becomes boring. And, and, and I'm, and I'm going to speak about my experience, so I'm not going to say it becomes boring for everyone. Okay. There were times when I was in pain and I just had it. And, and I, I just wanted to put my focus on something else, and so I would do that. And the other, other great boon that I had was that because my son was injured, he was two, he wasn't lying around feeling sorry for himself. Mm. It would be awful for the bandage changers, that part. He would cry. It would be horrible for all of us because we would all be in this. You know, you can just imagine. You know that the nurse is going to come and change the kid's bandage, and he's going to cry. He's going to scream. I know what it felt like because I was going through the same thing. And so all of us would just be like in this, you know, we'd put on some video for him to watch, some music for him to listen to, distract him. It would be an hour of awfulness. Oh, poor baby. And then he would be fine. He would go off and he would start playing and he would forget. And I really, I really watched him and I, I told my body to do that too. Mm. I told my emotional self, come on out of it. Don't linger in the story because the story of what happened and why you and all of that keeps you in this downer energy. You can acknowledge that you're in pain, mm -hmm. but you don't have down on energy about it. You don't have to be oh, why me and poor me. You do, and you give yourself time for that, but then you've also got to let yourself come out and let other parts of your being live, go on. Does that make sense? As a part it of does. your does. But like, so give me an example. Can you give us an example of, uh, excuse my eyes here. Can you yeah. give us an example, I, I think uh, allergies. Can you give us an example of a moment where you had that, like, I'm tired of this pain, um, and, 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 like, something that really helped you. What, what was something that well, it really... Was, um, it was in the summer. We'd just gotten back from the Bahamas. We were living in Las Vegas, and there'd been a storm, so there was a power outage. And so I kind of was brought into the living room to say, because I decided to do, I took kind of my healing process 
into my hands a bit more by choosing not to be in the hospital for the whole thing. Mm. So we had the nurse to come take care of us instead, and it's actually worked out cheaper for us than being in the hospital. And so anyway, so I'd, I'd come into the living room, and there were no lights, and my son was there, and we had flashlights, and he was just singing and dancing and running round and round in circles, even though his legs were burnt. And that just made me realize, like, wow, you know, and we actually all enjoyed singing and playing together and laughing, and it was, it was great. Wow. And then... And then it was, and then the pain kind of brings you back, and then you've got to lie down, and you're not comfortable because the back is burnt, the sides are burnt, the legs are burnt, and so all of that's part of the conversation. But these little pockets of when you can let yourself mm. enjoy yourself, or to see the joy of life in your child, or you know, for my son's birthday, it was it was actually really magical, the whole thing in some ways, um, because we had gotten for his second birthday, you could get um, fertilized duck and chicken eggs and you got this home incubator and so we had this home incubator so here we are with all our burns and bandages and everything and in the kitchen we've got this incubator going <laughs> with chicken eggs and duck eggs and we're hey, eagerly anticipating for the eggs to have. and they did and so at one point we had about six or seven chicks and three ducklings swimming in our bath and that's what I mean about other parts of your life going on. And it was, just, it was just very life affirming seeing these. I mean, these were cute mm. ducklings swimming in our bath. I mean, how brilliant is that? And then right. to do with these chicks and ducklings is you give them back to the, to the, um, to this Farm. animal uh, place, mm -hmm. and then and then you can go get more eggs from them. Then they hatch, and you give them once they hatch. It was great. And that, that magic was really important to us. And then we got um, butterfly eggs, and they, they, they became caterpillars. Oh. And then they, the cocoon, and then we released them. So we did those kinds of, not, not thinking that we were doing those things mm -hmm. to help us, but those things that we'd already planned to do before we'd gone on the holiday. Mm -hmm. So those things were just a fail, and we'd have these life, you know, cycles of life and death things teaching us right teaching, there. Right. So it's ama yeah. that's, that's an amazing um, testament to what joy and fun and laughter yeah. can do for your overall well-being. Even if you've got yeah. burns all over your body. Amazing. Amazing. So yeah. this long, horrific ordeal, a couple of years ago, do you find that, because, I don't know, if, if a plane crashed on the beach... When I have my baby in my arms and my mother-in-law and <laughs> husband are right there, I don't know, how did, does it stay with you? Do you, is it not a day goes by that you don't remember it? How, where, how, did, how did that leave your consciousness, stay in your consciousness, you know? Good questions, good questions. And this is great in tying in with emerging, is that when I, in the accident, days after I decided that it wasn't going to be the deciding, the defining moment of my life, that it wasn't going to be the beginning of like me spending the rest of my life being bedridden, afraid of flying, don't want to see planes in the sky, afraid of fire, afraid of going on an adventure. I decided that even though I wasn't there yet, but I decided that it was not, that wasn't going to be me. I wanted me to have an amazing life, such an amazing life, that this episode would be like, oh yeah, what was that thing that happened? Oh yeah, that accident. Like I didn't, I wanted the rest of my life to be so full, so exuberant and adventure filled that this would be just something that happened. Wow. I said that to, wow. I wrote that into my script of my future. And I think anybody going through a traumatic event, uh, accident, illness, disease, mm -hmm. lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to even imagine that happening, that you wouldn't have a full life. You don't know if you're even going to get better. Right. But something, speak from a place of fullness where you are still creating and generating your life so that can, that possibility can exist for you. You know, it sounds like I was one of the things I wanted to ask you was, was there a moment, and you just answered it, I think, because I uh -huh. felt it, I yeah. wanted to know, is there? Would you remember the moment that you felt empowered for the first time through this ordeal? And when you make a decision mm -hmm. about, I want my life to be great, 
That's yeah. Like you're back in the driver's seat. I love that. Uh, you know, I, I made those statements even though I may have been feeling very down. I may have felt I didn't even really believe in that. And there were many days when I didn't believe in that. And there were moments when I wished it would just end. Like I just, I wanted out. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I said that to myself because I know the way life is and I know how consciousness we create through our consciousness. And I knew the importance of creating, using the best of me to create my future, even though in the moment I was creating it and saying it, I may not have fully believed it. Mm -hmm. I had to have a future to move towards that wasn't about me being bedridden or, or having to have amputations or any of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. I want that. And so I think that's really important is that even if you don't feel it, give that part of you that isn't broken somewhere to go. That's You've, so empowering. That's go, so go empowering. Nice. And why create a sad story for your future when you can create whatever you want, even if you don't believe it? Mm -hmm. Look to a sunset, look to a sunrise, mm. and merge with that wholeness. Well, that, that you, that's so beautiful because the mind-body connection, right? So now, on a good day, when you're not burned all over your body in horrific pain, on a good day, you know... It's very easy to have a mind-body connection because if you burp, oh, I ate too much or stomach ache, you know. But now you're taking this to a whole nother level. Yeah. So now you yeah. have to coexist with yeah. pain and think exactly. positively at the same time. So tell us yeah. about, I would love to hear the mind-body connection to you before the right. accident, during the recovery, and then now. Right. You know, how have you evolved in your right, connection right. with your body? Yeah. Yeah, well, just so that the viewers know, before this accident, the work that I do involves being aware of mind-body connection. It involves being aware of our, how our consciousness impacts our state of health, how it relates to our relationships. So I was, I was very immersed in this work and practiced this work for 20 years already mm -hmm. and so when I when I encountered when I'm in the accident I had to step back and rely on these tools mm -hmm. and so what is the mind-body connection well our thoughts affect our sense of safety our emotions affect how I feel and how I feel triggers how our hormones are going to respond to that if I'm scared if I say this, I'm not safe my body is going to contract. Mm -hmm. It's going to fight, fight or flight. If it's going to fight or fight, it's going to be releasing adrenaline. Protect yourself. Protect your, protect yourself. So one of the things that you can do when you're in this kind of a space is do self-talk that tells you to relax. Mm. If you relax, your body can go into healing. Because if it's in fight or flight, it's in survival. Right. It's not maintenance. It's not in healing. It's not in regenerating. So one of the key things when you're injured, when you're in a very negative, scary situation is to actually go the reverse and say relax. Mm. So any technique you know to, for relaxation is excellent. Meditation, um, listening to calming music, having a bath, going for a walk, whatever you can within the capacity of your physicality, mm -hmm. do that. I meditated a lot. Mm. Another thing that I did was I used uh, cultures, imagining us wherever, whichever place in my body was hurting, mm -hmm. I would ask that what color do you want to come into uh, to release this pain, to release this hurt? Mm. And then just seeing that color coming into my body. And the other aspect of that color exercise is listening to the story. Pain is one side mm -hmm. and suffering is one side. Two different things. Pain is physical, ow, 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 ow. The suffering is the story that I'm telling myself about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So creating that distinction. You know, you know, I, I heard so many stories in that time of healing in myself. I feel sorry for myself. I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I just want to give up. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Why did all that kind of chatter? Yeah. And it rings so heavy. It rings you down. And I remember I began to like feel the weight of those stories. I began to kind of carry them and feel like, oh. And you know when you see people who are sick, they're like, oh. Yes. I like that part of it is the pain is exhausting and part of it is the story that you yeah. have to almost look like someone who's suffering to get people's respect in a way. Mm. And I'm saying kind of 
things that maybe people don't want to hear or say about people in pain because I was in it, I can say it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's fun. But there is there is an acting out of that story that happens. Right. If you're really smart and you're really compassionate and you really want to heal yourself, you will separate the two. Yeah. The story from the physical pain. Because the story is gonna keep you it's gonna keep you going in circles. Well, it's, it's like you said. It's like you said, I I decided. Yeah. I decided because it, it you know, you've heard that pain is a suffering is a choice, right? So it yeah. it is human. It's human nature I think to for lack of a better word, wallow in yes. the negative story. Yeah. Um yeah. you know, I had a I had a pet pass a few weeks ago and I had a similar thing. I had a I have to focus on helping everybody else feel better about it because I know that will help me feel better about it. But it was a I did not want to cry for six months. Right. I didn't want to cry for one month. I didn't want it to pull me. Right? Mm -hmm. But you like but 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 you know, pain at your at the level you had for you to Th that's what it is. You made a choice, and that's very powerful. Right. But it's also it, a something that anybody can do at any time in their mind, right? Right, right. And you and were laid choice. up in the hospital, right? Exactly. And that choice can be a mind, body, spirit choice. Yes, yes. You know. Yes. So as you, I think one of the things is, is when we're in these kind of situations, whether we've lost a loved one or we're in physical pain or. Where we're encountering a, a decision, they're going to tell you've got terminal disease or something. Right. Is that you have a choice as to how you want to respond to that information. Yes. You have you a don't choice. Don't have to. There is no default. No. If you had something traumatic happen, you still have choice of your mind. Right. To make and it's and it's still okay to go through grieving, to be yes. angry, to be upset. But know that that doesn't be, that doesn't have to be the place you stay for the whole time, right? Or right. The rest of your life, right? And that and the other thing is, you know, Nidja, one thing that I realized because I didn't heal after a week, I didn't heal after two weeks, I didn't heal after three months, I didn't heal. It wasn't happening. And we tried, we tried uh, pig skin, we tried wow, ethic skin, we tried all kinds of different procedures. And um, is that then you've got to realize, okay, if this is going to be my life mm -hmm. for long, a year, two years, the rest of my life, mm -hmm. how do I want to be in this and who do I want to be in this? Right. That's because my next that's, question. Right. And if these are the limits within which I am now existing, whether yes. that physical imprisonment, imprisonment through pain yes. or, or putting, this, you know, whatever it is, whatever's limiting your sense of access of yeah. who you want to be in the world, yeah. okay, then now I've got to figure out what my freedom is and how can I exercise my wholeness wow. within this, the confines of this pain, the confines of a bed. wasn't, you know, I didn't get out of a bed for months and months and months and months. Right. And, and so you have to make those decisions. And you have to, I'm sorry, but you have to dig deeper than this is what I feel right now. Mm. You have to go past the surface emotions Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean to call them, acknowledge them, and mm -hmm. then go and deeper and deeper till you find your peace, until you're at peace with what is happening. Well, it's so that your choice, you have yeah. to choose to go in, face the pain, face the anger, face the. It's not fair, right? And it's you, no longer the same, right? Yeah, you're not so, the oh same physically. Your body has been altered. Whether yeah, internal or external, back. And you you can't back. it's not there's the no what? Going back. Yeah, there's, there's no, no going, going back. back. Yeah, so you're different now. You're physically different. You've experienced something, so now you have an internal shift in how you think and feel. Whatever. So now, so this is this is what my 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 last question I want to ask you is. Yeah. So you know, you're a beautiful woman and smart and 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 loving and all these wonderful things, and. Um, as a woman, we uh, we have this appearance, the external that we got used to, and then we got to get used to it aging. But then, when something happens where an external situation has 
altered your external appearance that you've right. been so used to and yes. you were getting ready to have it age a certain way or whatever. So now, how do you... So yeah, you, you're different now. So the creating the wellness in your life now, after you've healed for the most part, um, being different physically, being different because of the experience, you know, how... So so what is the, the nugget, I guess, the, the, the lesson, the yes. wisdom on... You said it, not defining it, who you are, you know, being open yeah, to a new definition. And, and you know what? S some of us have an accident happen. Some of us go through a disease. Some of us go through loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. But it all comes back to this, is live your life. Live your life now. And and with a lot of humor, because it it's all, okay, you know, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. Be okay if I just kind of hone in on and say, "Oh, my body looks like this." Yes, that's all I'm seeing. That's, yes. that's as big as my lenses of the world. Well, look around. Yeah, it's so beautiful. If you yeah. play all of this world does not look through this lens of what it is to be beautiful or what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a human. Mm -hmm. You know, and so open the aperture of your life in the way that you perceive it, and you're going to have a different. Give yourself the chance to have. A life that you've lived. That's what I would say. Wow. Live your life. It's magnificent. Even at, even in the experience of loss and all of the, all those textures, all of those are textures and vibrations of life. And you know, I, I feel, I feel really glad and grateful because I, I can see life. I can see life and I feel that pulse of wowness. You know, it's snowing outside and I and it's like I'm just like, wow, look look at that snow and look at the way the wind's blowing and I wonder what the trees are, what their experience of this. So I'm immersed, I become part of the fabric of life, life. even right. Outside yourself as well. So yeah. I've yeah. become kind of just this encapsulated energy. I feel by making the choices and letting the smallness fade away, dissolve, die. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm actually part of the fabric of life, and I want to know what it feels like to be a tree in this cold weather. I mm -hmm. want to feel my consciousness meeting the sky as it's as the snowflakes fall down. I want to feel the ecstasy of the snow melting on my. I mean, I want to feel all of that. So, so before. I'm so let me ask you this in closing. Um, your work. You 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 talk a little bit about. The work you do now with your clients, and and what the work means to you, like, how are you different in your approach to how you help people? Um, if that makes any sense, is you know, do you have a new take on your work? What do you do? How do you help people? I want to everybody you know, to hear about you know your business. What it is. Yeah, it's not that I'm doing anything differently. What is different is that I'm sitting way deeper in myself than I was before. Oh. And the, the way that we can really help anyone is by going into the deepest places of fear, of pain, or ecstasy, of celebration. So it's not that you just go deeper into your pain and your suffering and, and, and separating those out. But you also, if you're, if again, if you are, if you're aware and you're loving and you and you you're a good soul and you want to give yourself a go this lifetime, then you'll also allow yourself to spread your wings and experience the joy without holding back, mm. or with there having to be a reason for the celebration or for loving someone, for letting someone come into your life. All those barriers begin to fall away, and you you get to be this. You get to experience yourself as this wonderful, resplendent, kind, loving, conscious being, mm -hmm. and it's a great thing. And so that is what I would say is more apparent to me about myself, is that there is more sense of celebration, and a more sense of meeting that celebration and then engaging in that, and also a much deeper sitting within my being of being able to listen to people's pain and helping them to find their own light through that, mm. find their way through that, those experiences of you know deep hurt, deep hurt, deep loss, deep uh, abuse in the past, whatever it is, but to help them to find their light again, whether it's lightness in being, in humor, it's their expansion. That's what I think I can I do now with much more bandwidth.
And people can learn uh, and read your blog and learn more about the work you do at tenderlogic.com, right? Tenderlogic.com. And, and my, my blog is specifically written to help create that clarification mm-hmm. in the, these kinds of, whether it's our daily experiences mm-hmm. or really knock you out experiences. It still takes the same set of muscles to work through these, these challenges and um, possibilities in our lives. Well... I tell you, I think I, I'm looking at you, and all I keep hearing in my <laughs> head is, you know, people, you get your experiences in life, and what you do with those experiences really defines you. And I can see the the tremendous power to empathize with people in pain of all kinds, and to help them dig deep and find that peace is amazing. Yeah, work. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you very much. It's like my thank you. I just want to say one more thing. It's like yeah. my my teacher Chris Wisdom said. She said, "Use life. Yes. Use everything that comes to you. Use it all." And and I I I took that learning and I have applied it in my life. And and I would say that it rings true. Use life. Use life. That. It's great. Use life. Yes. And you, you I, your life yes. is an inspiration. <laughs> I tell you. And you know, yes. thank you so much because I I really. Um, I really love the work you do. I love your writing, and I tell everybody to check out her blog, which you'll see yes, under if, the video. Yes, and if they, if they subscribe to the Contemplations page, um, they will get that blog, and they get access to all these um, audio meditations and, and contemplations that are specifically about these kinds of conversations. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll put a link to the Contemplations page yes. underneath as well. Yes. Well, yes. thank you. I'm going to let you go and have a wonderful rest of your day with your snow. <laughs> Yay, and, thank um, you, dear Jess. Thank you for giving you. This, these words to these people. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy to do it, and I hope that they will find something to use from that. I definitely think they will. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. It's all right.